did you, thinking about um, political days, did you feel that there was a difference between being elected versus being appointed? Oh, there's a big difference. There's a huge difference. So what, how do you feel about that? Well, you're more directly, uh, re you relate more directly to the people when you're in elective office. Mm -hmm. um, and when you move, when I moved from governor to the head of the Environmental Protection Agency in Washington, it was easier for me than for some of my uh, fellow governors who moved into, into the federal system because I'd had, it, had a cabinet that I appointed the entire cabinet. But, um, you know, you knew what was expected of a cabinet and you knew as a cabinet member you didn't set policy. That was up to the principal. You carried it out. You gave them your best advice if you thought they were being, you know, going down the wrong road or that uh, this wasn't going to work that way. But if they said, this is what I want, then you say, okay, uh, here's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't like that, um, you figured it out. But yeah. you weren't in control and you weren't as in direct communication with the public as, mm -hmm. I mean, you give press conferences, you went out and you met, I mean, I've traveled a lot to go to, go to places when, especially when something bad had happened, um, to meet with people and to talk about it, but it wasn't the same thing. Looking at your history, I also was looking for com common themes in the different positions that you've had, the different packs that you formed, and the things that I came up with is, is that you, you're all about the environment. You're all about um, making this world a, a healthier place, looking at energy, looking at water, global warming, air quality. All of those things have kind of been a theme. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that being an author, being a Republican, but also it's about bringing the country back together again. I mean, I tried for years with various mm -hmm. different organizations to try to get the Republican Party to recognize the, the dangers of the way they were going to the right and the fact that the Democrats were going more to the left because they set up the system such that, you know, it was only up to their, each district was their people and so all the candidates cared about was the base and they got more extreme because we didn't vote. But anyway, that's another story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so it's it's something, it's the same thing with Andrew Yang. I mean, he tried it with the Democratic side, and right. uh, we've just learned through the hard way that that's not going to happen. And then when you see it, how one party, states, uh, cities, any area of government, it, it doesn't work as well. The people aren't as well represented when there's only one party in control. You really need to have at least two. I used to be a strong supporter of the two-party system, but I've decided now you really need a third party there to give people an alternative choice, and you need to make, they're the ones that are gonna make changes to how you vote and who gets to vote and, and uh, what primaries are like and open the process up so people have a real voice. So the third party is really gonna be more like the center. Yeah. It's a little bit of each. Right. Yeah. So, Summing it up, if you had to look at your life now, mm -hmm. right, and you were talking to younger people, mm -hmm. right, we want to encourage everybody, we want to encourage you to get out and vote. Um, what would your advice be to the younger generations that are all about Instagram? They're not really reading as much. How should they go about kind of forming an opinion? Well, they have so much because they have all these technological devices. They have the ability to search, to not just stay in the sites that they like, that reinforce their opinion, but force themselves to get out of their comfort zone and to listen to other people. Um, the worst thing you can do is when you sit down to talk to somebody and they have a different opinion than you is to shut down or to call them your enemy. Figure out why. Why do they feel the way they do? What is it that led them to believe a certain way when you believe a different way? And then see if you can't have a conversation. And nine times out of ten, you can. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always found, if, and I've done it with particular very controversial issues, putting people with alternate opinions in the same room and say, okay, do you agree this is a problem? And when they say yes, say, okay, how do we fix it? Mm -hmm. And have them talk to each other, and it's just amazing how much you can get out of it um, and start peeling back that onion, you find that actually there is much more that 
on which we agree than where we disagree. Yeah, it seems like with some of these younger generations that um, everybody has an opinion, but everybody's opinion is right. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. With the younger kids, I'm hoping that this generation will come up and they'll listen to, to experienced people like yourself. Well, and Gen Z will... seems to be more engaged, at mm -hmm. least this year, than we've seen in the past um, so far. Whether mm -hmm. they actually make it to the polls is the big thing. But um, they've certainly been more engaged with the issues because they've been so massive. Right. And so where do you see yourself in another... I don't know, two years, three years after this election? Who knows? <laughs> no idea. Alive, I hope, is the first right. part. Of but course. beyond that, no idea. That's good. Then how does that feel? Fine. Kind of liberating, I mean, right? Well, I'm, I've never known. Yeah. And that's the other thing I always tell kids when I talk to them is, is you know, don't think you have to plan out every step because it's not going to work that way. Life does not work that way. Yeah. And be ready to take advantage of opportunities as they come to you. Uh, luck is when opportunity meets preparedness. And people just aren't lucky. They've, they've prepared themselves. They take it, they get out of their comfort zone. They grab the opportunity and say, I can, I can learn this even if I don't know a lot about it right now. I can learn and be very good at it. Yeah. And, and be willing to fail. Um, that's the other thing you learn as much if not more from failure as you do from success. As a wise woman, what would you say to this little girl? <laughs> Pay attention to your mother who's right behind uh -huh. that lady who's <laughs> not gonna be happy with the way you're looking at her. So thank you so much for oh, pleasure. And talking with me. Oh. Um, we have Big Bear here from Big Bear Strength and Conditioning and he has a couple of things that he wants to share with you. Huh. That wasn't part. That wasn't part of the deal. I don't know that I have to talk to him too. Yeah. So Jim, why don't you come on in?